TPN Fundamentals, Part 2, The Ingredients. Now that we've gone over some of the basics of TPN, we will now move on and talk more specifically about TPN formulas. As before, I've enlisted the services of our resident nutrition experts, Chefs Andre and Pierre, to help us navigate through this journey to describe and explain TPN. So they'll be with us, assisting us throughout this lecture series. TPN can be formulated either as a two-in-one solution with the IV fat emulsion administered separately from the dextrose and amino acids, or as a three-in-one total nutrient admixture with the fat included in the same bag with the dextrose and amino acids. The three-in-one system is the preferred method since it allows all the components of parenteral nutrition to be mixed in the same infusion bag and be administered over a 24-hour period. We will be formulating all of our TPNs in this lecture series using the 3-in-1 system. The 3-in-1 solution is available in standard bag sizes 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 mLs. Advantages of using a total nutrient admixture include convenience of administration and reduced risk of microbial growth as compared to the 2-in-1 system. TPN includes the delivery of macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are composed of carbohydrates, dextrose, protein as amino acids, and fat. Micronutrients are composed of electrolytes, vitamins and minerals, trace elements, and water. The TPN macronutrients provides the nutrients very similar to the food that we eat every day. There's carbohydrates, dextrose, protein as amino acids, and fats. So the key macronutrient components are dextrose, amino acids, and fat. Let's delve into each one more closely. For dextrose, the usual final concentration in central TPNs is 12 to 25 percent, and in peripheral TPNs, 7 to 8 percent. Base solutions with various concentrations up to 70% are available. The energy fuel provided is 3.4 calories per gram. For amino acids, the usual final concentration in TPNs ranges from 3 to 5%. Base solutions of 10 and 15% are available. Protein is not considered a caloric source. It goes by some trade names of free amine and aminosin. The usual final concentration of fat in TPNs ranges from 4 to 6 percent. Base solutions of 20 and 30 percent are available, and fat provides energy of 10 calories per gram. This is provided through 9 calories for each gram of fat, but the emulsifier and glycerin account for additional calories for a total of 10 calories per gram. The most common fat emulsion that's available is named intralipid. Let's talk more about IV fat emulsions. Administering IV fat emulsions allows for a reduced dextrose load, which may decrease the risk of severe hyperglycemia. As a general rule, fat calories should be limited to 15 to 30 percent of total daily calories, if possible. Maximum fat calories are not to exceed 60 percent of non-protein calories. The most common IV fat emulsion that we see is intralipid which is made up of soybean oil, egg yolk, phospholipids, and glycerin. In a patient who has a severe egg allergy, we need to use caution if we administer intralipid to that patient. Another IV fat emulsion that's available is named SMOF lipid, which contains soybean oil, medium chain triglycerides, olive oil, and fish oil. The role in therapy at this point in time has not been established for SMOF lipid and currently the lack of high quality evidence precludes any recommendation on the use of this specific lipid in critically ill patients. Some other important points to remember regarding fatty emulsions. IV fatty emulsions provides the essential fatty acids the body needs. If you're using a two-in-one TPN system, fatty emulsion 20%, 250 mLs must be given twice a week to prevent essential fatty acid deficiency. The lipid content of propofol provides 1.1 calories per ml. 
So if you're infusing propofol, this should be taken into account when calculating caloric intake. If triglyceride levels are greater than 400 mg per deciliter while on a 3-in-1 TPN, consider decreasing the lipid concentration or infusing the fat separately. The most important micronutrient in TPNs are the electrolytes. A convenient all-in-one solution is named Hyperlite, which provides all the important electrolytes needed. Hyperlite 20 ml contains sodium 25 MEQs, potassium 20 MEQs, calcium 5 MEQs, magnesium 5 MEQs, and chloride and acetate to balance. It's very important to memorize the amount of each electrolyte contained in the volume of hyperlite when formulating TPNs. This is because quite often, we need to break up the hyperlite solution and provide one or more of the electrolytes individually. Standard peripheral TPNs contains hyperlite 25 mL per liter and central TPNs 30 mL per liter. The other important micronutrient are trace elements. TPN solutions typically either contain four or five trace elements that include zinc, chromium, copper, manganese, and selenium. It is also handy to keep the daily dose of each trace element handy, as some may need to be removed in renal failure or in cases where the bilirubin is elevated. Let's discuss each trace element individually. Zinc is a cofactor for over 70 different enzymes. It facilitates wound healing, helps maintain normal growth rates and normal skin hydration, and also the senses of taste and smell. Copper is essential as a cofactor for an enzyme that is necessary for proper formation of the iron carrier protein transferrin. Copper also helps maintain normal rates of red and white blood cell formation. Manganese is an activator for enzymes. Chromium helps to maintain normal glucose metabolism and peripheral nerve function. And finally, selenium is part of glutathione peroxidase, which protects cell components from oxidative damage due to peroxides produced in cellular metabolism. Caloric density. What is caloric density? Caloric density tells us how many calories per ml is contained in the TPN. Once we calculate this, this factor helps us easily determine how many calories per day a patient is receiving. Let's look at the energy substrates for macronutrients. Dextrose provides 3.4 calories per gram. Fat provides 10 calories per gram or 1 calorie per ml. Fat is most calorically dense. Protein is not considered a caloric source. Caloric intake is termed non-protein calories. So here's an example of calculating caloric density. What is the caloric density of the following TPN? Dextrose 12%, amino acid 3%, fat 4% in a 1000 ml bag. First we calculate the dextrose calories. 12% means 12 grams in 100 ml times 1,000 ml bag times 3.4 calories per gram is equal to 408 calories per liter. For fat calories, 4 grams per 100 ml for a 4% solution times 1,000 ml times 10 calories per gram equals to 400 calories per liter. The caloric density is the sum of 408 calories from the dextrose and 400 calories from the fat which equals to 808 calories in the 1,000 ml bag, or caloric density of 0.8 calories per ml. When starting TPN, make it easy on yourself and use the standard formulas first. Here's an example of a standard central TPN formula that we can use as a good starting point. The macronutrients are set as dextrose 15%, amino acid 5% and fat 5%. Potassium phosphate 12 millimoles is one of the electrolytes added. Keep in mind that there is additional potassium contained in potassium phosphate in an amount of 1.5 MEQs of potassium per 1 millimole of phosphate. 
Also note that the electrolytes are listed as per liter, while vitamins and trace elements are listed as per day. Hyperlite multi-electrolyte solution 30 mLs per liter is added. This contains sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride and acetate to balance out the anions. Finally, trace element 5 concentrate 1 mL contains the daily dose of all five trace elements. Let's go over a TPN case example. A 69-year-old female is prescribed a standard central TPN formula to run at a rate of 75 cc per hour. The pharmacist and dietitian agree with the appropriateness of the TPN. Laboratory values are all within normal limits. She is 5 foot 8 inches and weighs 61 kilograms. Here's what we're going to do in a stepwise fashion. Calculate the energy and protein requirements for the patient. Calculate the calories and protein delivered to the patient on a daily basis. Calculate the caloric density and percent fat calories provided by the TPN formula. Calculate the electrolytes delivered to the patient on a daily basis and make adjustments as needed. Calculate the energy and protein requirements for the patient. In terms of calories, the patient needs 25 calories per kilogram per day, which is equal to 25 times her weight of 61 kilograms or 1,525 calories per day. In terms of protein needs, the patient needs 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram per day, which is equal to 1.5 times her weight of 61 kilograms or 92 grams of protein per day. Calculate the calories and protein delivered to the patient on a daily basis. We're using a standard central TPN, dextrose 15%, amino acid 5%, and fat 5%. The TPN is running at 75 cc per hour, which would be equal to 1800 mL per day, or 1.8 liters per day. The amount of calories provided by dextrose is calculated by multiplying the percentage of 15% times the volume of 1800 mL to get 270 grams, times the factor of 3.5 calories per gram, or 918 calories per day. The same can be done with the other energy component fat, which would be 5% times 1800 mL, or 90 grams, times a factor of 10 calories per gram, or 900 calories per day. So the total amount of calories per day provided by the TPN at 75 cc per hour will be 1,818 calories. Protein is simply calculated by looking at the amino acid percentage of 5% and multiplying by the volume of 1,800 mL to give you 90 grams of protein per day. Calculate the caloric density and percent fat calories provided by the TPN formula. To do this, we simply take the amount of calories that are provided per day, which is 1,818 calories, and divide it by the total volume that the patient receiving is receiving per day, 1800 mLs, or a caloric density of 1.01 calorie per mL. To get the percent fat calories, we take the number of calories that are provided by fat per day, 900 calories, divided by the total amount of calories that's provided per day, 1818 calories, times 100%, and we get percent fat calories of 50%. Calculate the electrolytes delivered to the patient on a daily basis. First, we look at the potassium phosphate, 12 millimoles per liter, which provides phosphate of 12 millimoles and potassium, 18 MEQs per liter. Remember the factor of 1.5 times the amount of phosphate would be equal to the amount of potassium in potassium phosphate. Hyperlite 30 ml is broken into the individual electrolytes, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium per liter. But remember that the patient is receiving 75 cc per hour, which is 1.8 liters. And so each of those one liter amounts need to be multiplied by 1.8 to get the total amount of electrolytes given to the patient per day. 
Note that the total amount of potassium that's given to the patient would be 32 MEQs from the potassium phosphate and 54 MEQs from the hyperlite with a total of 86 MEQs per day of potassium. Make adjustments as needed. As we calculated earlier, the patient needs 1,525 calories per day and 92 grams of protein per day. What we found was that this current TPN provides 1,818 calories per day and 90 grams of protein. So the TPN is currently providing more calories than the patient really needs. So what can we do? Well, we can reduce the amount of fat in the, in the TPN from 5% to 4%, and that will change the amount of calories provided by fat and reduce it to 720 calories per day for total daily caloric intake of 1,638 calories provided by the TPN, which is a little bit closer to what the patient needs. It also reduces the percent fat calories from 50% to 44%. Here's the peripheral standard TPN solution, which is composed of the macronutrients of dextrose 8%, amino acid 3%, and fat 3%. Keep in mind that peripheral solutions need to have lower osmolarity because it is being infused through a peripheral vein. Potassium phosphate in this solution is reduced to 6 millimoles per liter and hyperlite is 25 ml per liter. You can see in contrast to the central TPN solution, which has higher amounts of electrolytes and macronutrients. In summary, we previously described what a 3-in-1 total nutrient admixture is, reviewed the ingredients of TPN, the macro and micronutrients, compared the standard central and peripheral TPN formulas, and went over an example of starting a patient on TPN. Next up, we'll identify considerations to make when starting a patient on TPN per pharmacy, present case examples of ordering TPN in patients with renal failure, diabetes, and obesity, and discuss the concept of permissive underfeeding using trophic enteral feedings. Thanks for tuning in to watch this installment of the PharmEasy Tutor. I hope you learned something that you could use at school or in practice. If you'd like to continue to see more of these types of tutorials on YouTube, please make sure to click on the subscribe button below to change it from red to gray. Also, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you can click on the thumbs up icon below to change the color to blue. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to add them in the comment section below or share this site with someone else. Stay tuned to the Farm Easy Tutor channel for more lectures in the upcoming weeks. So until next time, remember to take it easy.